Welcome to the Southbridge School Committee meeting. Tonight is Tuesday, June 17, 2014. Please join the school committee in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, uh, we'd like to ask if there's any public input. Is there anybody this evening that would like to address the school committee? Seeing none, I'll call the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. May I have a roll call vote, please? I'm a roll call, please. Mr. Lebo? Present. Mrs. Congdon? Present. Mrs. Donovan? Present. Mrs. Quinney? Present. Mrs. McLaughlin? Present. By present. Thank you. Next is agenda item number five, the approval of minutes. We will first approve the regular school committee meeting minutes of June 10th, 2014. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Mrs. Congdon. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Quinney. Is there any discussion on the June 10th <clears throat> meeting minutes? Seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. The next three agenda items, 5B, C, and D, uh, the reason it's unusual for us to vote uh, at the regular school committee meeting on subcommittee meeting minutes, but these were the last meetings of the year, and we kind of just wanted to close things out. So only members of the subcommittee will be voting on these uh, agenda items. So members of the Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee, um, uh, we need a motion to approve uh, the minutes of the May 12, 2014 Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee minutes. So moved. Mr. Olivo makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Donovan. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, can I have a roll call vote on the subcommittee members? I'm not sure who the... <laughs> Mr. Olivo? Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. It. Thank you. Motion carries. Next, we have the policy subcommittee meeting minutes of June 16, 2014. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Congdon makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Quinney seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the policy minutes? Seeing none, could I have a roll call vote on that, please? Okay. Uh, Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Um, Mrs. Condon? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Donovan? No, Mrs. Quinney. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Quinney. Yes. Three yes. Thank you. Motion carries. And finally, the curriculum subcommittee meeting of June 16, 2014. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion made by Mrs. Congdon. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Quinney. Is there any discussion on the curriculum subcommittee minutes? Seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? And Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Three yes? Thank you. Secretary. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number six, I have some announcements. Um, first, I would like to m uh, make everybody aware that last Wednesday, June 11th, um, the district hosted the State Secretary of Education, Dr. Matthew Malone. He came to the district to, um, his time was limited, so he did just visit Southbridge Middle High School, but said he would return to the district to visit our other schools. Uh, yesterday, I received a press release regarding his visit from the uh, Executive Office of Education that I'd like to read um, into the record. Uh, and this has been made available to uh, local media outlets, so hopefully they will also publish this. Secretary Malone visits Southbridge Public Schools, Southbridge. Secretary of Education Matthew Malone recently visited Southbridge Public Schools as part of his effort to visit school districts across the Commonwealth. To date, the Secretary has visited more than 165 school districts since being appointed in January 2013. During his visit, the Secretary was able to meet with school officials, faculty, staff, and students, giving him a comprehensive understanding of the district. Quote, I noticed immediately that the school layout was carefully designed and constructed with student success in mind, said Secretary Malone. While visiting the classrooms, I was inspired by the level of instruction and teacher collaboration I witnessed, especially in the middle school level classes. End quote. 
Secretary Malone frequently visits schools to tour and interact with educators across Massachusetts to see firsthand the work being done in classrooms to maintain the state's standing as a leader in public education. Quote, Governor Patrick believes in governing for the entire state and he has asked his cabinet to lead for the entire Commonwealth. My observation from the visit is this is an example of strong leadership coupled with coherent instructional strategy executed at all levels of the system, said Secretary Malone. The Secretary added, quote, Southbridge is making strides to close achievement gaps and increase student involvement. I applaud the school committee for making tough decisions over the past few years in order to preserve comprehensive programming for students. Southbridge is a school district parents should want to send their kids to, end quote. We thank Secretary Malone for his visit and look forward to um, his return to the district at some point. Uh, next, I just want to remind everybody that the last day of school is June 19th. It is a half day. That's uh, just two days away, hard to believe. There will be a Meet the New Principal <coughs> event at Southbridge Middle High School, so an event to meet Melissa Earls on June 25th from 4 to 6 p.m. That event is open to parents and community members. The Highland Street Foundation um, out of Boston offers free Fun Fridays, whereby free admission is offered to 66 museums and cu cultural venues on Fridays throughout the summer. A link has been posted on the district website, but is also available at www.highlandstreet.org. Please save the date for August 20th will be U Inc's third annual Youth Summit. The Leadership Olympics is the theme. I don't have any specifics, but I, information will also be posted on the district website as it becomes available. And information on the summer feeding program was recently sent home to all students. And information on free meal sites is available on the district website. Um, at this time, I'd like to provide a school committee year in review. Mr. Olivo and I will be sharing uh, the, the reporting on this, and that will be followed by subcommittee members providing reports on the uh, year in review for their individual subcommittees. So I will begin. I should begin by saying that um, I had done a lot of work on this in a narrative form, and uh, I lost a lot of my work, so I had to recreate it. And, uh, in having to reevaluate uh, how to go about doing that, I decided to look at the goals, the draft goals that we had talked about in October of 2013, and see where we were relative to those goals. So um, I want to remind everybody that the Southbridge School Committee recognizes that the academic success of students in the Southbridge Public School District is a shared responsibility between the school committee, superintendent, the four district schools, students, and their families. The following goals were developed to align with those responsibilities specifically delegated to the school committee. I want to note that this document was originally developed in October 2013 after the resignation of the former chair. The composition of the school committee has changed since July 13th with the resignation of one member, the prolonged absence of another, and the relocation of a third. Despite not having a full board since October, the school committee has endeavored to accomplish the goals originally established. We are proud to have accomplished much and look forward to July when we will have additional support from new members. One of uh, the first topics that we looked at was superintendent oversight. The school committee is responsible for the appointment and evaluation of the superintendent. So one of our goals was to develop an evaluation instrument for the superintendent. This was important to the school committee because the evaluation of the superintendent is a primary responsibility of the school committee. It's important to review the superintendent's performance to determine if it is in the best interest of the school district to retain or release that individual charged with carrying out the policies of the school district as defined by the school committee. The last evaluation of a Southbridge Public School superintendent took place in 2009. The Massachusetts Association of School Committees developed a superintendent evaluation instrument that's recommended by both that organization and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. During the course of the year, we learned this instrument may be customized to fit the goals and needs of individual school districts. It became obvious when the school committee reviewed the document that there is a clearly defined process and learning curve that are necessary to implement the evaluation. It is only fair to evaluate an individual on goals that are established at the outset of a year. 
For that reason, the school committee has already committed to participating in a district governance transition workshop with MASC, which will assist current and new members in the process of establishing goals and evaluation criteria for the new superintendent. This work will commence over the summer, and discussion of this process will be transparent. Regarding policy, the school committee uh, is responsible for establishing and periodically reviewing the policies for the school district consistent with the requirements of law and the standards set forth by the Board of Education. This year, the school committee endeavored to undertake a comprehensive review of district policies. This was important to the school committee because it is constantly cited that the work of the school committee is policy and budget. Although much work had taken place to develop new policies and revise existing policies over the last couple of years, the policy manual itself had not undergone a comprehensive review since the 2007-2008 school year. Since that time, new laws have been enacted and others have been repealed. Policy review is a continual process. We learned from our peers at the MASC conference last fall that a complete uh, policy review takes about 18 months and then you need to start all over again. So to that end, this policy subcommittee started from the beginning and completed its review of Section A of the policy manu manual, which covers foundations and basic commitments. The bulk of Section B, school board governance, was also reviewed this year. There are lingering questions that may require additional work, and the newly configured school committee will continue where this committee leaves left off. Another priority for this school committee was to review and update the district's crisis and disaster plans. It was necessary to do this because obviously the safety of students and district personnel is paramount to providing a sound educational environment. Mm -hmm. Not only is it best practice to have updated plans in place before an emergency strikes, but Massachusetts law now requires that each school district have appropriate emergency plans in place. The law also requires that those plans are reviewed on a regular basis. The school committee recognized the crisis manual developed in 2007 was outdated. Significant events have occurred locally and in schools throughout the country since the manual was developed. Notably, locally, the June 2011 tornado which struck parts of our community, but in the opinion of school committee members, was poorly handled by the school district, in large part to the lack of an emergency plan. The policy subcommittee spent a significant amount of time writing a new crisis response and emergency preparedness handbook. The final draft of the handbook was reviewed by the policy subcommittee uh, policy subcommittee last evening. It was recommended that the policy be turned over, the manual be turned over to the superintendent who will be charged with assembling local law enforcement and emergency responders to review the handbook and make revisions if necessary. The handbooks will be available for staff when students return to school and it's our intention that the hazard specific responses will be formatted into flip charts which will be posted in all classrooms, offices and student work areas. Um, and finally, with regard to policy, there was, uh, it was evident that there was a need to revise the district's current wellness policy to ensure alignment with curriculum and policy. Again, this was an important uh, priority for the school committee because the existing district wellness policy was created in 2006. Federal nutritional guidelines have changed in the years since, and the committee could find no evidence that the policy was ever reviewed after its implementation as specified in the policy itself. This will be discussed further when Mrs. Quinney talks about policy, but just a brief overview. A wellness advisory committee comprised of both district staff and community members was created to review current policy. The committee met several times during the school year to create a new wellness policy that aligns with curriculum, policy, and law. The committee's recommended wellness policy was submitted to the policy subcommittee for review last evening. It was recommended that it be forwarded to the full committee for approval and adoption. I will now turn uh, the rest of the report over to Mr. Olivo. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. The third area was fiscal responsibility. The school committee is responsible for reviewing, approving, and overseeing the operation of the annual school budget. This year, the Southbridge School Committee <clears throat> will identify tools or systems needed to sustain and balance budget. This is important to the school committee because the school committee has an obligation to the residents of Southbridge to be fisc fiscally responsible of the resources provided. The school committee recognizes it is important to identify effective tools and systems that will remain in place even if staff changes. 
Protocols and procedures are the foundation of good business practices. The school committee opted for a committee of the whole budget meetings instead of a budget facilities and transportation subcommittee. This afforded all members of the, op the opportunity to actively participate in monitoring the FY14, the fiscal year 14 budget and oversee the creation of the fiscal year 2015 budget. Superintendent Nimbrico worked extensively with the school committee on developing a budget for fiscal year 15, 2015, which accurately reflects the district's needs. The budget has been re reformatted, making it much easier to understand and follow as the year progresses. The school committee supported Ms. Sheridan's new procedures for student activity accounts by making appropriate policy changes. Another Another tool is to establish capital improvement plan based upon identified needs. This is important to the school committee because capital projects must be identified and budgeted in order to effectively plan for the future needs of the school district. Capital needs for fiscal year 2015 have been identified and budgeted. These include instructional techni technology hardware, network and telecommunications hardware, capital technology and the acquisition of two special education vehicles. In addition to these immediate needs, the school committee understands it is necessary to create long-term capital and technology plans. It is the intention of the school committee to undertake this task in the 2014-2015 school year. Another goal was to meet with the town council biannually to review the operating budget. This is important to the school committee because the health of the town is reflected in the schools and the health of the school is reflected in the town. Establishing a good working relationship with Southbridge Town Council is vital for the benefit of the entire community. The school committee has met jointly with the Education and Human Services Subcommittee on February 4th and April 17th to review the operating budget. The town council and school committee work jointly to increase the school department budget to provide identified needs. Another goal was to participate in interest-based bargaining training. Why this is important to the school committee was because interest-based bargaining is an alternative to traditional positional-based bargaining. It is a collaborative process where the parties come together to identify common issues of concern and work together to jointly solve those issues. School committees that have participated in interest-based bargaining report contracts are settled quickly and cite improved relationships between labor unions and administrators. Members of the school committee attended the Massachusetts Education Partnership Conference to learn more about interest-based bargaining. The school committee planned to participate in IBB training this spring, but busy members were unable to coordinate schedules to attend training sessions this year. It is the intention of the school committee to participate in IBB training in the future. Another section is identified and prepared for those collective bargaining contracts which are due to be negotiated. This is important to the school committee because collective bargaining is a primary responsibility of the school committee. It is important that the school committee negotiate contracts which are fair, fiscally responsible, and reflect the goals and priorities of this district. What the school committee has successfully negotiated an agreement with the Southbridge Education Association which corrected economic disparities, improved the district's ability to recruit and retain personnel, balanced step increases, and standardized the length of the school day. The negotiation subcommittee is in the process of negotiating their paraprofessionals and tutors union. I'm sorry, with the paraprofessionals and tutors union. The maintenance, custodial, and school nurses unions have also requested opening negotiations. In summary, the school committee has had a very productive year. Much has been accomplished in a relatively short amount of time. Much remains to be done. We are grateful to begin the next year with a leader, a plan, and a vision that will be refined once new members join us. We are extremely grateful to Superintendent Nimbrico for his guidance and commitment to the school district. Though he will not be here on a day-to-day -day basis, we are pleased to be, sorry, we are pleased 
He has offered to serve as a consultant, mentor, and advisor for the 2014 and 2015 school year. We look forward to working with our new superintendent, Ms. Gardner, and the entire district leadership team to build on the strong foundation that has been set in place over the past 12 months. Thank you. Well done. I noticed you filled in a couple of words that I missed. I did. <laughs> you did a good job. Um, there is no report of the representative of the Student Advisory Committee this evening. So we will turn to the school committee, subcommittee reports and the year in review. Mrs. Donovan. Thank you, Madam Chair. The curriculum subcommittee met last evening, um, June 16th, in room M100 at 25 Coal Ave. Present were our subcommittee members, myself, Mrs. Congdon, Mrs. Quinney. Also present was Mrs. McLaughlin as a community member and Mr. Brent Abrahamson as a community member. My for first order of business which was to approve the meeting minutes from our May 19th subcommittee meeting and those were uh, voted on all in favor. The, uh, the next thing that we were able to accomplish was our year in review. Um, as chair, I put together a report that summarized our year in review as a subcommittee that I will read shortly. Uh, shortly after that, we had our members open forum. Um, at that time, we looked into seeing, we know that there's work that's going to be done over the summer for on our curriculum maps for both ELA and math, and um, the motion was, well, not a motion, but it was, the request was made that the subcommittee actually see those final, those final products at the end of the summer, and we also want to make sure that the information relative to these curriculum maps and the amount of work that is going to transpire over the summer is properly communicated to our teachers. Uh, finally, Mr. Abrahamson, as a community member, was able to give us some information relative to PARC. Um, we talked a little bit about the ELL program, and finally, he was um, very complimentary of our fourth and fifth graders who participated in their, their show, Phantom Toll Booth, last week, and um, was able to share some information that he found on a website that um, was relative to the show, but also contained mass core standards and lesson plans that moving forward perhaps teachers could use as another way to teach the standards and make learning fun. All that being said, our meeting adjourned at 6.59 p.m. So moving on to our curriculum subcommittee year in review for the 2013-2014 school year. Um, starting on October 1st, our subcommittee, our subcommittee met monthly through June 16th. Our subcommittee worked closely with the district's director of teaching and learning, Patricia Gardner, and the district's director of instruction, which originally was Dr. Sarah Jordan, and then later Mr. Aaron Osborne, who is currently our director of instruction. We had some meetings where we were joined by Ms. Dom Nugent, who is an English language learner teacher at our middle school and also our part-time ELL coordinator, as well as Ms. Colleen Culligan, our director of pupil personnel services. We had a meeting in which Mel Blake, the librarian at the middle high school, joined us, and then we also had a second meeting in which Superintendent, Superintendent Number Co. was present. And often we were joined by community member Mr. Brent Abrahamson. Our subcommittee began its year discussing curriculum programs and initiatives that can track and increase student achievement. Such programs included milepost, star reading, focused on results, and new teacher induction. And we looked at ways for funding some of these various initiatives through the use of Title I grants. Another one of our main focus was to discuss curriculum mapping. We discussed the use of curriculum maps and looked at sample maps from the Duxbury School District. We learned that the Southbridge Public Schools curriculum maps for ELA and math will be finalized over this summer, and then work will begin in the fall on our science and social studies curriculum maps. We were also advised that mapping should be completed um, in the near future on specials, including wellness. In December, our subcommittee conducted a learning walk for the first time, whereby we toured all four schools, along with the director of teaching and learning, and each respective building principal. Our purpose in doing that was to see with our own eyes what was taking place in the schools so that we could focus on maximizing our educational environments. I want to be perfectly clear, no teacher was evaluated, no teacher was ranked, no teacher was judged. We simply observed what was taking place in the buildings so that we could better understand the educational environment surrounding the students 
so that we could get a better understanding of the needs of our students in our district and also to better prepare ourselves for when it would become necessary for us to set resource prior priorities during our preparation and finalization of the FY 2015 budget. The majority of our meetings focused on the district's ELL program and the need for drastic changes in this existing program. Specifically, the committee recognized that the district needs to work on a systematic approach in identifying, assessing, and monitoring all ELL students. The need for hiring more licensed ELL teachers was also discussed, and we also need a full-time ELL coordinator. Lastly, we learned that the district not only needs to draft a policy and procedures booklet for the ELL program, but also a proposal for the ELL program for the 2014-2015 school year. Therefore, the bulk of our time at our most recent meetings has been reviewing that draft proposal for our ELL program for the upcoming school year. We've looked at cohorts and the amount of half-day classrooms that can support our EL ELL students while providing the recommended minimal hours of instruction at all four of our schools. We recognize that our greatest need in our ELL program is at the middle high school, where currently we have 120 students being serviced by only two teachers. Therefore, we hope that this issue can be addressed with additional staff and support. Also relative to our ELO program, we talked at great length about the English acquisition model and how it could possibly help our students. We looked at WIDA testing, home language surveys, parent notification forms, and a placement in the ELL program form. Ms. Dom Nugent was also very helpful in providing our committee with information that she gathered as she visited other school districts in the state who have successful ELL programs, and she shared as a reference with us the English language education program handbooks that she acquired from visiting those districts. Lastly, we discussed the state mandated sheltered English immersion training that many of our core subject teachers as well as some of our administrators have taken this year. And then finally, other items of discussion that occurred at our subcommittee meetings throughout the year. We talked about PARC, which is a new state initiative that stands for Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Career Students. We talked about place-based learning plans and work-based learning plans. We discussed the Southbridge Public Schools gifted and talented curriculum at our elementary schools. We talked about a library partnership between Eastford Road School and the Middle High School. We talked about conducting an optical tour, uh, a tour of the Optical Heritage Museum. Unfortunately, due to timing and other issues out of our control, we have yet to take that tour, but that was something that will absolutely take place as our new school year, our new subcommittee um, reconvenes. We also talked about taking a tour of the Stonebridge Press printing facility, and we also discussed technology, keyboarding, and computer curriculums for our elementary students. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Donovan. Um, for policy subcommittee, Mrs. Quinney is going to provide the year in review. I just want to recap last night's meeting very quickly. Uh, items of business included the district crisis manual. I've already spoken about that. The parent student handbook for the 2014-2015 school year, um, which is uh, still being worked on. There are still some changes that need to be made. Um, the wellness policy, uh, summer school policy, which we'll be dis uh, voting on later this evening. We also talked about um, a new background, pol background check policy that's necessary as a result of national <laughs> fingerprinting laws. Um, we did not take official action on that, um, as we think it merits further discussion and deliberation. And that is what we did last evening, and now I'll turn it over to Mrs. Quinney. Thank you, Madam <clears throat> Chair. Um, as was discussed earlier, this was our first year of establishing a wellness advisory committee, and tonight we have two members of our two of our community members who will um, present to the school committee regarding um, the wellness advisory committee this year. So I turn the floor over to you, ladies. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here this evening, and I, for one, will not be complaining. Because winter will be upon us all too soon. My name is Karen Spiewak. I'm a health educator, and this is Jasmine Rivas. I'm the program coordinator for UNC's Voices with Choices. So we're here tonight representing the Southbridge Public Schools Wellness Advisory Committee to provide you with a brief update regarding our activities to date. Other members include Ashley Caprera from the Wellness Department Head, um, Karen Checa, the head nurse at the Southbridge Middle High School, Lisa Bashan, the nurse at the at Eastford Road School, Deb Dwindle the nurse at Charlton Street School, 
Katie Alicia, Food Service Director. Community members include Susan Fafford DeRozier, the Harrington Hospital Self Wellness Program Coordinator. Glenn Jepno, Executive Director of the Tri Community YMCA. Kristen McAvoy, Director of the Nutrition um, Program at Harrington Hospital. Myself and Karen. So the committee, mandated by law, was established in January and began meeting monthly in order to meet three main objectives. Develop a customized YRBS, which is a survey. Participate in data collection at the middle school and high school wellness fairs. Draft a wellness policy to be submitted to the district's policy subcommittee that needed to include, but was not limited to, goals for nutrition promotion, goals for nutrition education, goals for other school-based activities to promote wellness, and to update nutrition guidelines. The policy was created in part by reviewing and comparing wellness policies across the state. The final draft of the wellness policy was approved at our last meeting in May and sent on to the school committee's policy subcommittee for review. The results of the data collected at both health fairs was also forwarded to the subcommittee. The YRBS was implemented last month and its results was also sent to the school committee, will be also sent to the school committee. The high school survey data was shared with the middle high school wellness department chair, the food service director, and the director of teaching and learning. In closing, on behalf of all the members of our committee, we extend sincere thanks to Erin for keeping us focused on the task at hand. Um, and it was a pleasure working with everyone on the committee. Absolutely. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> that concludes our brief presentation. Brief pres <laughs> yeah, very brief presentations. <laughs> any Does questions? anybody have or? any questions? Perfect. <laughs> Just want to say thank you very much um, thank you. on behalf of the school committee. We know that this was a lot of work, and we know that you're both very busy, and that the other members of your committee are also very busy, and the fact that you took time to do this for us is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> uh, thank you ladies. I want to um, publicly thank everyone on the committee, Jasmine Revis, Karen Spiewak, Glenn Juckno, Sue Fafford de Rochers, Kirsten McAvoy, Lisa Bashan, Katie Alicia, Ashley Caprera, Karen Cheka, and Deb Duenel. Um, it was a lot of work, and we did meet every month um, from January through May. We had, having never had a wellness advisory committee, we had a large task in front of us, and I, I thank you all for your very hard work. I appreciate it greatly, and I'm glad that I got to do all that work with you. So thank you to you all. Now on to the policy subcommittee year in review. Members of the policy subcommittee at different times included Kara Donovan, myself, Lauren McLaughlin, and Jill Congdon. At the beginning of the year, our first meeting was in August. We reached out to the district leadership team to find out if there were any specific uh, policies that they felt needed to be addressed as we move forward. At that time, um, Ms. Sheridan brought to our attention the need for a student activities accounts policy, which then led to the development of policy DL. We revised our um, bully, bullying policy, J-I-C-F-B, I believe, um, to comply with the new language within the state law. We began our comprehensive review of the school committee policy manual, and as Ms. McLaughlin said, that hadn't been done since 2007. In conducting that review, we not only checked legal references to make sure that those references were up to date and they weren't poly uh, laws that had been repealed. We researched to see if there were any other laws that had been implemented since that time that were pertinent to the policies that we were looking at. We researched uh, MASC model policies. We researched policies from across the state to find um, policies that were different from the MASC policy and then taking into consideration specific needs that we felt our school district needed addressed within those policies. We reviewed section A of the manual and one area that we held off on was regarding quarry checks given the national federal um, fingerprinting system that was being rolled out and still has some issues that we need to explore and discuss further. The majority of the policies in Section B were reviewed. Many revisions took place in order to better meet the needs of our district. Um, we also 
removed a lot of laws that were referenced that had been repealed and put in new laws that have since been adopted by the state. Um, and moving forward, my hope is that this comprehensive review continues as well as, as concerns arise within the community and within the schools that each um, those policies would be reviewed and revised in order to better meet the needs of our school district. And I believe that is it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do you have anything to report on negotiation? Uh, we will continue negotiating with SEA Unit C tomor tomorrow afternoon, and we will be um, voting today to ratify a contract that we negotiated for this past year with SEA Unit C. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Congdon, Family and Community Engagement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee this year included at various times Dr. Domingo, Mrs. McLaughlin, and then later on in the year we were joined by Mr. Olivo and Mrs. Donovan. We met monthly. Um, this year the Family and Community Subcommittee um, created a speaker series where we were asked we were asked different members of the community to come in and speak to the subcommittee about their various organizations and programs to better form a collaboration and understanding. The speakers for the year included PTA President Sandra Aponte, Margaret Morrissey from the Jacob Edwards Library, and Holly Christo from Literacy Volunteers, Adam Miner, the editor of the Southbridge Evening News, Gilles Marie Flores, program coordinator of Aspira of Mass, and Lynn Simons of Southbridge Community Connections. All of the speakers informed us of their roles in the community and we discussed building these relationships. In September, to begin the year, the subcommittee created and distributed a school committee survey. The survey was distributed at each of our four schools open houses and we received feedback from about 350 parents and families who completed the survey. From these surveys, we found the district needed improvement to bet where, where the district needed to improve to better support the families and students in the district. It was also informative to see what worked for the parents in the district and what their top concerns were in regards to their children's education. On November 20th, we held our first parent workshop titled Acronym Mania. The district leadership team designed a lift, list of acronyms and had tables set up throughout the middle high school cafeteria where parents could find out information on acronyms such as ANET, DIBBLES, MCAS, and SAT. Families were encouraged to participate in small group discussions, and teachers and administrators from every school were on hand to answer questions. In the fall, we discussed after school programs and um, had the opportunity to visit the Bridge of Faith after school program on Main Street in Southbridge. The committee worked to create a parent teacher student compact which was forwarded to the superintendent and the district leadership team in hopes to implement it at the beginning of the 2014-15 school year. A list of all parent organizations and their contact information for the Southbridge School District was compiled. The committee discussed welcome packets for the district and what they would like to see in them. The packets would be given to any new incoming student who enters the school, be it pre-K or grade 12. At our last meeting, we made recommendations for next year's Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee, which included school committee being available for one hour a month to listen to the concerns of citizens, continuing the weekly newspaper submissions from the schools to inform the community of what is happening in our schools, and maybe including a weekly Ask the Superintendent or rate, rotate it by having um, one school be showcased each month, keeping the speaker series for next year, doing a theme for the month and having speakers related to each theme to involve the community and the students. Overall this year, it was a productive year that flew by. The subcommittee is proud of this year's accomplishments and we look forward to continuing to involve the community and working together to increase student achievement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Congdon. Is there any report of the SPED PAC liaison, Mrs. Cooney? Yes, thank you, Madam <coughs> Chair. Um, I just wanted to talk about what the SPED PAC is and do a little year in review regarding what has been accomplished not only for the SPED PAC, but um, on behalf of the SPED PAC. The SPED PAC is a special education parent advisory council that is mandated by the state. They're an advisory committee to the school committee. So when issues arise with students within the special ed community, they will frequently go to um, like the president of the SPED PAC or one of the 
chair members and discuss what those concerns are. They try to um, facilitate getting their concerns addressed through the school system, through uh, Ms. Culligan, or through their individual school chairs. Um, when that doesn't happen, then the SPED pack um, then goes to the school committee and advises regarding where areas that need improvement or have been challenging for parents or students regarding their special education services. Um, so this year was the first year we've had a liaison to the Special Education Parent Advisory Council. And another accomplishment that was made was this year for the first time the SPED PAC was able to receive donations and also fundraise, not only for the SPED PAC itself, but to be able to raise funds in order to put back um, into the school system for children in those special ed programs. So those were some accomplishments. They also had their first spring fling. That was a great hit. And they've also gotten uh, speakers and presenters to come in to present to families about concerns that they have regarding their children's, um, this year it's been sensory integration, sensory processing disorders, and what that means and how they can um, better meet their children's needs regarding those. So I thank Ms. Pate for all her work in that. And with that said, the next meeting of the SPED pack will be this Thursday at 6 p.m. in room M100. Again, there will be elections for anyone interested in sitting on the board of the SPED pack. Please um, come and receive more information and throw your hat in the ring for that. And also, it will, following that meeting, the final presentation in this series regarding sensory in integration by Anita Poulin will be put on. So if anybody has any questions or concerns regarding sensory integration and processing and what that looks like and um, how to better help their children or children in general, that would be a great resource for you all to attend. So again, 6 o'clock, room M125, Cole Ave for the meeting, and 6.30 for the presentation by Anita Poulin. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Quinney. Uh, this evening, we're pleased to have um, Miriam Krantz and Courtney Brousseau to present information on the summer reading program. Welcome, and thank you very much for coming. Thanks. Good evening. Thank you. I'm Miriam Kranz. I teach eighth grade ELA at South Bridge Middle High School. I'm Courtney Brusso. I'm the 9 through 12 ELA department head as well as a teacher for English for grades 11 and 12. Okay, so I want to start by introducing the novels that the middle school students will be reading this summer. The sixth grade novel is called a View, The View from Saturday by E.L. Konisberg. The seventh grade novel is Liar and Spy by Rebecca Stead. And the eighth grade novel is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. All three authors of these novels appear on the Common Core recommended authors list, and all three novels deal with the themes of bullying and stereotyping. The summer reading assignment requires students to use Bloom's taxonomy, in other words, higher order thinking skills, to provoke and promote critical thinking while reading. Students will be required to respond to 10 critical thinking questions and tasks tasks, excuse me, two of which, um, analyzing and evaluating, students will be able to exercise their autonomy in selecting options based on interest. This assignment is due no later than Friday, August 29th, which is the end of the first week of school. The completion of the summer reading assignment will count as the first test grade of the year. Uh, also, many of the learning activities in the students' ELA classes will, re will revolve around the summer reading assignment. Um, and the advisory block, which is something that is new and is still in the developing stages, uh, will also use the summer reading assignment to discuss the important themes of these novels, um, which are issues that are faced by many students across the United States today. 
Continuing on with the um, analyzing and evaluating the higher order thinking, um, grades 9 through 12 have a list of options that they can choose from. They're um, high interest novels that deal with a lot of teen issues going on. Um, so every student in the high school is going to be required to choose a book from that list. And then on that same day as the middle school on Friday, August 29th, they'll be completing an um, argumentative writing assignment where they will argue for whether or not the book should be included in a high school curriculum based on its merits and its lessons and themes, et cetera. Um, in addition, those students that are in honors level courses, um, for ninth grade they will be reading Looking for Alaska by John Green and we'll have an additional assignment for that. Um, tenth grade is reading Feed by M.T. Anderson um, with a symbolism and character project on that as well. Um, 11th grade is reading One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kessie, um, and we'll work on plot and um, elements of fiction. And then um, the 12th grade is going to be reading Year of Wonders um, by Geraldine Brooks um, with discussion questions, um, mostly higher order thinking, and it's supposed to mock um, what they would experience in a college English class. Um, in addition, we also have AP Language and AP Literature courses. Um, AP Language are going to be reading Their Eyes Were Watching God um, by Zora Neale Hurston, Mark Twain's Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and um, My Antonia by Willa Cather. They will have a um, synthesis uh, essay that they will have to write as well as an exam that's structured similar to the AP exam that they'll be um, encountering in May. And the AP Literature class has four books that they will have to read um, since they are seniors and more is expected of them. Um, they will be reading a drama, Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams, um, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, um, Kite Runner, and How to Read Literature Like a Professor, so which is often offered in most um, freshman English courses. Um, in addition, in college, not in high school. Um, in addition, um, our librarian, Mel Blake, has contacted um, Jake Bedrick's library, and so they are prepared to order extra copies of all of these texts and hopefully have them on hand. Um, in addition, in previous years, we were able to purchase a lot of books for students. We still have some left over, so um, tomorrow, after their exams, we're going to have an informational session in the gym where they can sign out books if we have them available. Um, in addition, we also have an Edmodo, which is an online course, um, kind of like a class, almost like a Facebook, but for school, um, where a couple of teachers have logged on, so they'll be available all throughout the summer to answer questions that the students have. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. Levo? I mean, Madam Chair, what was that website that you just mentioned? Um, it's edmodo.com. Okay. And tomorrow during the information session in the gym, we'll have a booth set up and students can get a um, passcode that they can log in and they can chat with it. Also, the assignments I forgot to mention are also, all the assignments are also on the school website. So in case the students lose the packets, they're also there. But um, edmodo.com is set up like Facebook and the students can um, message teachers and ask them for assistance. They can also, um, talk to each other if we set it up that way so they can ask peers assistance on things if they wish. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Madam Mrs. Donovan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, Ms. Prance, I just have a real quick question about the middle school side of things. Yep. Um, have the kids already received their packets? Or if they haven't, do you know what the timeline is for that? Uh, yes, they should have all received their packets. They went out uh, last week and this week. Okay. Um, and they are also available in the main office. It's also, I believe, on the website. And I believe Jacob Edwards Library will also have copies of them. OK, perfect. Thank you very much. I just want to thank and compliment all the staff that put together and worked hard on creating a um, reading list that's not only of high interest to the students, but also has literary value. And uh, very important that um, <coughs> Young people realize that education is 24-7. You don't shut your brain off on June 19th and come back in the fall. And I think one of the summer programs we have for younger kids is very important because uh, there's a lot of research that shows that if you don't do anything in the summertime, there is loss. And I want to compliment on the August 29th date. That's something that's very important because I was told in the past kids were given reading lists and there was no, very little follow-up. By mandating it grade by grade, having kids debate, having them think and talk, 
most of the time, in order to talk, you have to think. Not always true in our society, but, but uh, when you have the primary source in front of you, you've had time to read it, you've had time to analyze it, you've had time to discuss it with your colleagues, some great insights ought to come forth. So I just want to compliment the entire department on working so hard on this and, and the wonderful list that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Quinney, did you have something? Thank you. I just um, wanted to compliment some of these selections. Uh, my Antonia is one of my favorite books. And then I saw that The Kite Runner, and that's a really, really hard and deep book. So I think there is no doubt that students will be challenged over the summer. And I was just curious. There's a bunch, a bunch of um, options for the 9th, 10th, and 11th, and 12th graders. and set books for 6th, 7th, and 8th, is that just so that it's ensured that those books will be read or the availability of books and? Uh, the novels were selected based on a theme that we thought was very important for students to discuss. Mm -hmm. um, and so these, since the three authors of these novels appear on the Common Core mm -hmm. uh, recommended authors list, we felt that, um, well, by choosing these novels, they tie into the themes that we feel are, feel are important for middle school, especially middle school students are at such a pivotal age when they enter middle school and they're so impressionable. And bullying is something that happens very much in middle school. Um, it seems to be centered in middle school, really. And and um, so we felt it was important to tackle this theme and to pick uh, authors that were on that list at the same time to make sure we were following the common core. Excellent. Yeah, and I hope oh. during the course of the school year that you select books. And I'm not much on choices for kids, I think. These are the books that you should be able to read and discuss. And I think there should be a core list of a couple of dozen books that when you finish high school that you've read mm -hmm. and you can discuss with other people. So it's something that um, during the ELA curriculum meetings and uh, so on, you might say that we might want to have a monthly seminar on a particular book or a particular section of a book. So kids will have to read it, have to think about it, and have to discuss it. And the uh, best thing in the world is a roundtable discussion on that because you can't hide. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I was um, I was just going to say that I think having a theme of bullying and then being able to discuss that coming into August kind of sets a tone moving forward regarding expectations and what um, behavior. So I think that that was very, very well thought out plan. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gardner. Thank you. And I would just like to add that, you know, I agree with Mr. Nimbico. Our English department has done an amazing job and they've done an amazing job this year. And I think especially one reason that we chose just the one for middle school is that we're trying to get a, a base of knowledge so that if a teacher needs to discuss a book, every student will have read it. And also for MCAS at times, an open response question will be in a book that you have read either in or out of school. And we want to make sure that they've read at least one book somewhere along the way. But um, mostly, and the main reason is that they will have a general body of knowledge that they can carry through with them. So at least through eighth grade, they will have three novels that any teacher for many different subjects, as Ms. Krantz said, they cover a wide variety of themes and a wide variety of lessons. So we're hoping that it's something that will be used across the curriculum. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I, thank you, ladies, very much. Thank Appreciate you. your presentation. I had also contacted Margaret Morrissey at Jacob Edwards Library, and I invited her to this meeting tonight. She did offer to come, but she also gave me some information to share with everybody. Um, she said that there's a new children's librarian that just joined staff, and they've already made two school visits. Uh, they visited Charlton Street School and Eastford Road School, and they're hoping to visit the other schools. Um, they wanted to remind everybody that the Jacob Edwards Library offers its summer reading program this year to all age group, including adults, which is nice uh, in the community. So parents can go to the library with their children or anybody in the community is welcome. The kickoff for the summer reading program will be Monday, June 23rd. There's going to be an ice cream social, 6.30 to 7.30 for kids 11 years old and under. There are quite a few events and programs offered throughout the summer. Um, a flyer is available. I've asked that it be posted on the district website. Um, and copies of the flyer were going to be disseminated to the, all the elementary schools this week, Monday. Um, and so that's it. So I wanted to thank Margaret Morrissey for that information and thank you too for coming to share. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just have one other thing that I want to add as this uh, summer program at Jacob Edwards Library. And uh, one of the reasons why New England is ahead of the rest of the country 
in um, educational program is because every little town has a Carnegie Library. And I think that one of the goals of the school committee and the school system should be that um, by the end of September, every single child have a library card. They've all been to video stores, but how many have been inside of a library? I think that should be absolutely compulsory and then develop that particular program. So, so I think uh, Pat needs to put it on your agenda as something to do. Uh, I think the library would be happy to come and have 100% participation of Southbridge kids with a library. And if you want to eat lunch, you've got to show your library card. Thank you. Did, Mrs. Quinney? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I know that the kindergarten class this year, Mrs. Trahan's class and Mrs. Wayman's class, I don't know about the others, but they were, they had planned, every year they plan a trip to the library to get kids their library cards. This year it rained both of those days, so the library was kind enough to come in and sign the kids up and give them their library cards in the classroom. So. Very nice. Starting off on a good foot in kindergarten. It's a, a, Jacob Edwards Library is a very well-run, valuable resource in the community, and everybody should avail themselves of the services offered there. So we thank um, Margaret Morrissey and her team for the good work that they do. Um, we're moving on to agenda item number 10, report of the finance director. Ms. Sheridan, you're on. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> okay, May 2014, crunch time. Uh, we've expended 81% of fiscal year 14 budget. We're still on track to have a balance, balanced budget this year, but I am monitoring it daily. So uh, we're happy to report that we never had to freeze the budget. Um, we're just monitoring it to make sure that uh, we're able to use um, the funds, but not go beyond our budget. Um, I prepared and attached the budget transfer list for the school committee approval. It's 263,729. Grant funding. The total grant funding for this year was $3,225,029. With a budget of 24,630,868, this grant total is about 13% of the total budget, which you can see is an extremely valuable revenue pot for the Southbridge schools. Grant management is very important, and I'd like to thank Aaron Osborne, Deanna Martinez, and Lisa Russo. They're a great team managing these grants. Some of the ex examples of expenditures that were covered by the grant funding was salaries, supplies, contracted services, professional development, summer school, stipends for employees, advisors, mentors, professional development, and some of the curriculum. The total grant funding expended thus far is $2,457,909, with the balance remaining of 767119 I have been assured by the grant team that all of these remaining funds have designated expenditures, and all monies will be expended. The grants have 630-14 and 831-14 end dates. Unfortunately, this is our last year for Race to the Top, which is in the amount of 293602 That's an example of some of the challenges you face with budgeting in school systems. That's a pretty big pot that we had to absorb into the general fund. The E-rate discount. I received confirmation from the town that the refund from Verizon in the amount of 67214 has been received and the monies will be available for the school to use for fiscal year 2015. The e right funds were very, very helpful this year for us, especially with telephone and internet expenses. Transportation. As I've reported in the past months, the SPED transportation was up. The regular transportation was up this year to additional, due to additional late bus runs that we added for the students. But luckily, we had some homeless transportation reimbursements from the state that help us offset that. We just got notification today that we're getting an amount of 12,456,000 for for this year's reimbursement. And we also got 24,502 earlier in the year. With some of those funds, we were able to purchase the SPED van, which was about 15,295, which will help us to curb those costs next year. SPED tuition, 
Again, that has been up, that is up this year. However, we do have the circuit breaker funds to cover those overages. As of the current date, it's about 148,515 over budget and sped tuition costs. Um, circuit breaker, I'm still awaiting my final circuit breaker check, the last of four installments of 139,148. The total circuit breaker allocation this year was 556,589. I have been informed by the circuit breaker, um, informed that circuit breaker is going to be increasing for fiscal year 15 from 40,512 per student to 41,000, I mean, rising to 40,512 from 41,408, which is what it was this year, an increase of 896 per student. Utilities, as we noted with the harsh winter we had, we had overages in utilities this year, but I was able to offset some of those with the rental of facilities revenue. I am hoping for a much milder winter next year. Copy machines. The machines that we have right now are getting old and they're beginning to be costly. Walter Salzak, the Director of Operations and I, have plans this summer to go over the proposals that we're getting from three different companies to hopefully get some new um, copy machines in and keep within the budget that we have. The town gave us some monies in the capital to fund these leases. Um, that's all I have right now in case somebody has some questions. Thank you. Were you going to say something? Buzz, okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Sheridan? No. Thank you very much. I, I just want to say that uh, by carefully monitoring and reporting on a regular basis and making sure that all of the cost centers know exactly how much they have to operate with, we've been able to finish this year in a, with a healthy sum and we have put aside enough that we can function next year. And I said before, I was very proud after reading all, all the papers around here, many of the towns are laying people off and not being able to meet this. So we, uh, for financial reasons, we can, we can expand the programs and continue to have a full complement of staff and maintain class sizes and so on. And uh, that's due to the hard work of a lot of people, but Karen has worked very hard to give you monthly reports, regular statements, and our grants have been expended properly. We've had audits, none of them, and they came back very mm -hmm. positive. And so the finances in this town, the school system, let me say, are in very good hands now. Thank you. Thank you. Report of the superintendent, Mr. Nemerko. I have a couple of items. Um, number one, regarding food services, we received notice today that the federal government um, had put together uh, the Healthy and Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010, and that was intended to provide access to, um, to meals for all eligible students in high poverty, uh, LEAs as they call them, local educational agencies. And uh, one of the big uh, bugaboos and banes of school systems was uh, having people qualify, filling out forms, bringing them back, and so on. And every school system that I've ever been in, you had good partic uh, maximum participation elementary, less in the middle, and then very little at the high school level because it was, uh, the form was cumbersome, the form was uh, put together in such a way that uh, high school kids resented that and didn't bring it back. So we were losing out on all that. So uh, with the change in the rules and then um, school districts that have 40% uh, or more uh, free and reduced lunch would be eligible for this. And then Kathy Alicia, Tilton, her name is now, and her team worked real hard in applying for this universal grant program. And then this uh, fall, we will be eligible for universal free lunch program and breakfast program. Every kid will get a free meal, and there won't be any qualifications. We won't have to go through application processes, having little fairs for kids to bring them in, offering them ice cream and so on, so we can qualify everybody. Because it, it is um, an important source of, of uh, revenue for school systems. It's also important that we qualify for E-rate rebates, we qualify for Title I funds, et cetera. So this allows us, we'll still have to uh, identify and then report in May of every, uh, of every year what are exact percentages of kids that are eligible for this, adult, but we don't have to go through the cumbersome aspect of that. Uh, secondly, um, 
through the diligent work of the finance department, we, we found out that we've been providing um, food services Trinity Catholic Academy at, at public school expense for a number of years. And when we informed them of that, obviously, it became quite a bit of a shock that we're not going to do that anymore. So we've uh, met and um, the Sheridan met this afternoon with representatives and that we will enter into a contract with them to provide food services to them during a transition period and then they're going to go out and, and uh, try to contract or develop their own food service program. But it was a bit of a shock to us when we found this out. So now that's been rectified. And uh, quite a bit of comment and discussion about uh, merits of a park. Uh, the Common Core, MCAS, and I've been a, pro a proponent of, uh, of testing for as long as I can remember because before we had no child left behind, each state and each community and each district was allowed to develop their own standards and it was amazing how many people were doing great. And then when you uh, came out with an um, international comparison test, we would end up 17th, 20th, and so on, 31st in the world. So there had to be some consistent standards and no child behind, no child left behind. We used to joke about no child behind left untested, but that's another story. It got a little carried away. Okay, but uh, at least the testing program has gone through. There is common core, there's pushback on that, but I'm recommending at the next meeting the school committee vote to continue with MCAS. And the reason for that is very straightforward is that uh, we need historical data. We need to show the improvements that are being made, and I can guarantee you that our test scores will go up substantially this fall when they come back. Because we've paid attention to it, you've had heard teachers talk about what they were doing, and it's been a very rigorous approach to ensure that the kids do the best they can because this is the one measure that the state uses. And by if we change the midstream now to park, we wouldn't have the historical data for, that we need. So that's my recommendation. With that, continue, show the steady incline, and uh, the herd will be moving roughly northeast on that chart. Um, lastly, this is my last meeting. Uh, and uh, it's, it's been a blast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. Oh, I just wanted to say one thing. And uh, I wrote it down over here. As I listen to the various reports of the subcommittees, I think that the uh, community has to give a, a big round of applause to the school committee members sitting in here that are, have spent hundreds and hundreds of hours for the benefit of your kids. I think that's important. As, uh, Robert Maynard Hutchins said a long time ago, uh, he was president of Harvard University, he spoke about the best education for the best is the best education for all. And, and then they questioned that, I says, I don't, not, not only do I want the best education for my kid, but I want it for your kid too. So it's worrying about the neighbor's child because a well-educated community is crucial. And like I said, you've heard me talk about education by zip code here uh, in this country. So you heard the reports, lots have been taken on, lots of hundreds of hours of unselfish work has been done by the, uh, the committee here and they'll continue doing it. So, so it goes, too often goes unnoticed and the only time you hear anything is a criticism. So I just want to say publicly thank you. I've had a, I was going to say I had a great time. I had an interesting time <laughs> <laughs> working with all of you and, and I think that uh, one thing I can say when I move on is that to collectively we've left this school system on a much better and firmer ground we can move forward and all kids will be getting the kind of service and attention that they deserve, not just some. So thank you very much for your collective work. I just want to give you all a hand. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Under school committee actions, um, I just want to make everybody aware that um, <clears throat> we will vote on A, Agenda items 12 B and C, the votes to ratify the contract between uh, Ms. Gardner and Mr. Nemberko for next year will be moved to after executive session. We're going to meet in executive session first, then we will reconvene in here for a vote on those two. 
So we will, school committee actions will be A to D to E. And then there were uh, several uh, uh, agenda addendums published um, in recent days. One is uh, 12F will be a vote to approve budget transfers. 12G will be a vote to approve Southbridge Public Schools 2014 summer school program. And vote H will be a vote to approve the superintendent's recommendation for statewide testing next year. So just wanted to make you aware of that. So first we'll move on to okay. agenda item 12A, which is a motion to approve a collective bargaining agreement memorandum of understanding between a memorandum of agreement between the Southbridge School Committee and the Southbridge Education Association SEA Unit C uh, on the agenda originally read Unit B it is actually Unit C paraprofessionals and tutors union for the time period July 1 2013 through June 30th 2014 uh, subject to ratification by SEA Unit C do I have a motion so moved Mrs. Congdon makes a motion do I have a second second Seconded by Mrs. Quinney. Is there any discussion on this agenda item? May I just ask if this has been ratified by SEA Unit C? Yes. SEA Unit C met on Monday evening or afternoon and they ratified it. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this agenda item? Seeing yes, oh, uh, Mr. Nebrico. This is a contract that had expired at well ready to be expired and a lot of work was put into it and I think that the next contract uh, needs to be brought forth because it has um, various tiers and uh, one of the my objections to the original contract was that all paras were treated alike and there was no uh, distinction made between uh, paras that were more trained and dealing with different kinds of uh, students that needed uh, more intensive uh, supports uh, and they were all placed in the same salary guide at the end, and, and uh, longevity was the only criteria for improving. So, so we are in the process of changing that. Let me say that the UNSC is very receptive to this change and we're proposing uh, tiers one, tiers two, tiers three, and tiers four, which will have different degrees of responsibility, different degrees of ability, training, and so on. So that will have a very uh, great impact because one of the biggest difficulties we've had is that when you have a high need students high need student that will need intensive support and so on it's very difficult to get when you're paying a low wage and the only criteria you had was years here so we're now able to distinguish and then pay for ability and work so so i'm very pleased that we're moving forward with that this was just part one to get last year covered and then uh, we're the process hopefully we can wrap up much of it tomorrow thank you is there any other discussion seeing none may I have a roll call vote please mrs condon yes mrs donovan yes mrs quinney yes mr olivo yes mrs mclaughlin yes a five yes thank you the motion carries as i said agenda items 12 b and c are being moved to after executive session move on to agenda item 12 D um, this would be it's written on the agenda as the first reading of school committee policy file IHCA madam Do chair motion. yes um, I move to suspend the rules so that we can vote this policy tonight given that summer school starts in just a few weeks okay um, Mrs. Quinney has made a motion to suspend the rules uh, do I have a second, second. To the motion Mrs. Congdon seconds the motion the motion to suspend the rules requires a two-thirds vote of the committee. Roll call, please. Oh, is there any other? Nope. Is there any no discussion? Okay. May I have a roll call, please, on the motion to suspend the rules. Mrs. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Quinney. Yes. Mr. Olivo. Yes. Mrs. Congdon. Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin. Yes. Five yes. Thank you. The motion carries. And now the motion to I restate, please. Move to vote. Policy IHCA summer schools. Thank you. So we have a motion to vote the newly uh, revised summer school policy. Do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Congdon seconds the motion. Is there any discussion? Go ahead. I just didn't know, Madam Chair, if it was newly revised, if it should just be read. I think it should be read, yes. Yeah. I'll, okay. Would you like me to read the policy? The policy reads, Southbridge Public Schools will offer summer school as a supplement to the instruction provided during the school year. 
consistent with the Southbridge Public Schools budget and grant funded programs. Specific offerings will be established annually. Instruction will be delivered by licensed, highly qualified staff. Students may be recommended for summer school for remedial, enrichment, or credit recovery purposes. Credits may be granted to high school students in line with the regulations of the school district. In-district and out-of-district rates will be set on an annual basis for all credit recovery programs. All summer programs will be subject to annual approval by the school committee. Any further discussion? Seeing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. Uh, the next vote is preceded by the uh, following declaration. I'm going to read it prior to the, uh, the vote. Um, Whereas it is the duty of the school committee to set policies for the education of children in our community, and whereas reported by uh, Mass Association of School Superintendent Executive Director Tom Scott based on information available on the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website, between 1996 and 2008, 13 years, there was a total of 4,055 documents, 312 on average per year that required action by local school districts in response to externally imposed mandates and regulations, yet that number dr increased dramatically to a total of 5,382 documents, an average of 1,077 per year between 2009 and 2013. Whereas educators in our community are having difficulty carrying out their responsibilities due to this rising tide of state mandates, including most recently a state teacher evaluation system, district determined measures, and park field testing, requiring educators to respond first to bureaucratic requirements other than classroom instruction. Therefore, I would need um, a motion. Mrs. Donovan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion to vote to support the Massachusetts Association of School Committee mandates as read. Second. Thank you. Motion made by Mrs. Donovan, seconded by Mrs. Congdon. Is there any discussion on this agenda item? Plus, did you want to? Say? Yeah. Um, ever since that reform and um, so on, there have been many, many mandates, many of them unfunded, that have added to it. And uh, association of school committees, together with association of school superintendents, have called upon the state to review what they're already requesting, find out which ones are not make are not priorities, and and refrain from adding additional ones. We have enough to do, and I think that uh, part of the issue when they keep adding new mandates with quick timelines. It's easy to sit in an office and do that. When you're out in the field, it's very, very difficult. Last year, we had a, a great deal of difficulty with the new mandated um, teacher evaluation program. It wasn't until March that we were finally able to get it approved uh, by the union. And then we only had two months now to follow through a very rigid and strict set of uh, dates and uh, visits and evaluations. So, so I think that they just need to calm down a little bit, and I think that I, I want to compliment and commend um, the two associations for calling on the state, and every school board, every school committee in the Commonwealth has been asked to do this, so, so therefore, we in Southbridge recommend supporting this. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mrs. Quinney? Madam Chair, I just want to clarify that the vote to support the MASC um, mandate would be that we would call on the State Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to refrain from adding new test mandates and other initiatives to revisit the mandates already imposed on districts with a view to reducing interference with classroom instruction, thus allowing educators to do their work. Thank you. Thank you for restating the motion. Is there any other discussion? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. Motion carries. The next is agenda item 12F. This was an addendum. A vote to approve budget trans the budget transfers for fiscal year 2014 as noted in the budget transfer sheet provided in the amount of $263,729.68. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Levo makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. 
Mrs. Quinney seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on this agenda item? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. Agenda item 12G is a vote to approve the Southridge Public Schools 2014 summer school program as presented to the school committee on May 28, 2014. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Donovan makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Olivo. Is there any discussion on this agenda item? Just to let the public know we're required uh, by our own policy to vote on um, the summer school program annually. This was a condition of the previously existing policy and is also a condition of the newly revised policy. So that's the reason for the vote. Any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. Motion carries. And agenda item 12H, a vote to approve the superintendent's recommendation for MCAS statewide for test statewide testing in 2014-2015. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Quinney makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Donovan. Is there any discussion on this agenda item? Mrs. Quinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think first that because the state hasn't approved PARC or implemented it as a statewide tool, that it makes sense to stay with the MCAS as well as we already have baseline data regarding how we've performed on the MCAS for several years. And in order to have that longitudinal data showing our improvement, I think that it is the wise choice to um, continue to use MCAS as our statewide test in our district. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. Conkton? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, unfinished business, there is none. Under new business, the next regular school committee meeting will be held July 1st, 2014 in council chambers. This will be a reorganizational meeting after the June 24th election. Follow, it will be followed by a brief business meeting. Um, member forum. Do you want to do member forum now or do you want to do it after, at the end, when we return? Just the question. We'll do it now? Do it now? Yeah, okay. Do it now. Member forum. Are there any members who would like to speak? Mr. Levo. Thank you, Madam Chair. First, I would like to uh, mention that Eastford Road School had their kindergarten graduation last Thursday and it was a really nice program. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Kim and the students for a job well done on their musical performance. A big thank you to all the teachers and faculty in our schools and best wishes for a great summer. Second, I would like to uh, mention eighth grade graduation is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at San Marcos Middle High School Auditorium. And uh, lastly, I would also like to mention that um, San Marcos, or I'm sorry, I said San Marcos. <laughs> I apologize. Um, Southbridge Middle <laughs> High School. Um, grades 9 and 11 awards program will be held Thursday, June 19th at 8.30 a.m. Uh, it has also been advised that if you plan on attending this program that you arrive early so that seating uh, may be arranged. I think that is it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Levo. Mrs. Congdon? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this time, I would just like to thank the public for allowing me to do my part on this committee to serve you to help improve student achievement in our school district. It was a rough start to the year on this committee, but I wanted to thank um, Superintendent Nemberco for all of his hard work this year and for sharing the same goals and visions of the school committee and helping to rebuild a school district. We have good people here who believe in the children of our community. Just yesterday, a parent wrote a letter to the editor in the Southbridge News thanking her child's kindergarten teacher for making such a difference in her daughter's life. So many kids in this district come from varying walks of life, and all of them need to be given the chance to be provided a good education. I would also like to thank Chairwoman McLaughlin for stepping up to be the chair of this committee, which at times can be a full-time job. Um, thank you, everyone. 
I'd also like to say on behalf of the West Street School Playground Committee, I would like to invite the community to the West Street School Community Build Day on Saturday, August 2nd at 8 a.m. Please come and join in the fun of building a new playground at West Street School. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mrs. Congdon. Mrs. Donovan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a couple things, mostly um, the first item of, that I wanted to talk about was just some information. I know at our last meeting, uh, Ms. Alicia Tilton was talking about our summer feeding program, and tonight we heard about the summer reading program that will be taking place at the library. Um, I just wanted to remind families um, and caretakers and daycare workers that there will be free lunch every day at the library being served from 11 to 1, that the lunch will be served in the children's room and the dates run from July 7th through August 15th. So you just need to show, um, show up between 11 and 1, and uh, as long as the child is under the age of 18, they will be served a free lunch. Um, just closing up end of the year things in our schools, uh, yesterday I had the fantastic opportunity to work with members of the uh, Lions Club and some other volunteers to provide a cookout for the entire school at West Street. We fed um, our teachers and we fed every child in that building. We had hot dogs. Mrs. Congdon's husband, Kevin Congdon, was one of our main chefs. Uh, Louis Latour was there. Uh, Calvin, uh, I'm sorry, Calvin, I don't know your last name, but he was a great chef as well. Um, but it was just so great for the kids. Everybody came out, they grabbed a paper plate, and Mr. Lab passed out. Uh, ice cream sandwiches, they sat on the lawn, they had their field day, and then at one o'clock everything was followed by an outdoor school concert for grades one through five and also the fifth grade band. It was a beautiful day uh, all around weather-wise and the kids were, the, gr the greatest thing was just the smiles on their faces and the manners. Every single one of those kids said thank you to me as they walked through the line. So kudos to, to the kids that are, that are there. Um, I mentioned last week that Phantom Tollbooth was coming up. I was able to attend their show, and it was fantastic. Those fourth and fifth graders did a dynamic job, and it isn't easy. And also to the director, Mrs. Brackett, who always puts her heart and soul into that, uh, that play every year, and it shows. So I wanted to congratulate them. I wanted to say that, again, with Secretary Malone here last week, I was very honored and privileged to partake in that tour with him, to personally meet him, and to you know share thoughts as a school committee member of what what we're looking for here and to be so grateful that somebody at that stature would take the time out to listen to us so i, I wanted to thank him for that last friday i was at charlton street school with other members of the school committee we were at charlton street school for their flag day and celebrations as long as it well as their memorial day celebrations with mr mike trombley um, Mr. Montigny and his staff, uh, Kathleen Cataret, Mrs. Kenda, they always do a fantastic job. So I wanted to thank them. Uh, I want to personally thank Mr. Montigny. I know that we invited him here this evening and he respectfully declined. However, this is his last year as principal at Charlton Street School and there's no doubt that he has put his heart and soul into the work over there and that is a fantastic school. And I personally wanted to thank him and wish him the very best on his retirement. And last but not least, um, again, I've, I've said this before, but publicly thank Mr. <coughs> Nemberko for all the work that he has done during his time here in our school district. He is absolutely right that this district is nowhere near where it was when he first came here. And it just takes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication, and it takes courage, and sometimes you make friends and sometimes you make enemies. But when you're trying to do what's best for everybody, um, that's something that he did, and I, I sincerely thank him for all of his work. And that is all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Quinney? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I also was able to attend the class day at East Ridge Road School, and I don't know how many of you have tried to corral um, kindergartners, never mind three to four classrooms full of kindergartners, and coordinate them in both music and movement. But I, having done that on a very small level, think that Mr. Kim deserves a very large award. He did a fantastic job with all those kids followed and were um, rather well coordinated and they knew all the words and it was really an amazing <laughs> show. And I know that Mrs. Small helped do all the art that was there and all those teachers and um, paraprofessionals had to work very hard in order to ensure that came out 
without a hitch. So thank you to all of them and congratulations to all the kindergarteners who will be stepping up to the elementary schools um, in the fall. The phantom toll booth I was able to attend on Friday and as Mrs. Donovan said, it was a fantastic show. I, fourth and fifth graders have a lot of ability and confidence that exceeds mine. They did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. The West Street School Field Day on Monday, they all, their show, Mr. Heath coordinated, which was fantastic. They said it was a Beatles theme. So the first through fifth graders all sang one Beatles song and again, it amazes me that people are able to coordinate um, classes in, in a fashion that was both entertaining as well as well produced. So thank you to uh, Mr. Heath and all the staff at West Street School for that and the Lions for um, their uh, cook-off participation. Charlton Street School also had a cook-off and the Knights of Columbus uh, cookout provided the food and cooked that for the kids. And I guess it's 22 years that they've been donating their time and um, food to Charlton Street School in that capacity. So thank you not only to the Lions, but to the Knights of Columbus as well. Also this past week, the eighth graders took a trip to Camp Foskett. And thank you to Mrs. Jalbert, who was able to pull that off. And um, to the eighth graders, who I have heard had a wonderful time and were extraordinarily um, well behaved. So I think that is everything for that. Um, I want to thank the community for the opportunity to sit up here. It has been quite a year with a lot of work. I think as a committee, we've accomplished a lot despite um, lots of obstacles. I think we've been focused um, on all the students of the district and ensuring that they all receive the quality education that they deserve. I think our community deserves that, our students deserve that, and we teachers, administrators deserve a district that we can be proud of and ensuring that every child gets the quality education and the support that's required in order to ensure that happens is definitely a goal of mine and I think collectively as a school committee we've been committed to that and seeing our district move forward. I think many amazing things are happening in many classrooms in our community, in homes in our community, and I think we have a school district that we can be really proud of. I think, unfortunately, we have a level four district stigma over us. I think if people saw all the amazing things that were happening in our district that um, they would be extraordinarily proud to be residents of Southbridge and have their students um, be students within the Southbridge School District. I want to um, thank Mrs. McLaughlin who did step up um, to be the chair of the school committee. It has certainly been a lot of work um, and I appreciate your willingness to do that. And I'd also like to thank Mr. Nemberko for his service to our school district and to our students in focusing on students and their achievement and ensuring that the education that they're provided at every level is the quality of an education that they all deserve. And I look forward to next year um, as Ms. Gardner takes her role on as superintendent. I think the foundation has been set and I hope and anticipate we're just gonna continue on making progress and closing those achievement gaps and continuing to improve upon the education that all of our students receive. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, may I just say quickly a couple of things? Um, I also, too, wanted to thank Mr. Montigny for all of his years of service to the district. Um, I had the opportunity to attend Flag Day, which is always a great celebration at Charlton Street School. And um, Mr. Montigny, I think, got a little bit emotional at that ceremony, recognizing that it was his last Flag Day celebration. Hopefully he'll come back and visit. But just to thank him for his um, work with our schools and for coming out of retirement to help when asked, when the call was asked. I also want to thank the uh, staff at Southbridge Middle High School and especially the eighth grade teaching staff who supported all the eighth grade students with a dinner dance last week, followed by a trip to Camp Foskett this Monday and are supporting them with their graduation tomorrow. They have really done a phenomenal job trying to make um, this a special milestone for those students. So my gratitude to them. 
I also want to just say uh, thank you for your kind words. It has been truly an honor and a privilege to serve this group. Uh, a harder working, more dedicated group of people I cannot imagine. Um, so thank you very much for this opportunity, for your faith in me, for helping me, um, for not chastising me too much when I've screwed up. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity I was given. So thank you for that. Now uh, we need a vote to go into executive session to number one, discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for union and non-union personnel or litigation to the extent that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the governmental body pursuant to chapter 30A, section 21A, part three, and to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with non-union personnel and to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union Personnel pursuant to Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Part 2, and the Chair so declares. So moved. <clears throat> Second. Thank you. Motion by Mrs. Quinney, seconded by Mrs. Congdon. May I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. Uh, again, the meeting will reconvene in open session for the purpose on voting on agenda items 12B and 12C. Good evening, welcome back to the Southbridge School Committee meeting. We have um, returned from executive session. The time is 9.34 p.m. There are two uh, items on the agenda. We will be voting on agenda item 12B, the vote to ratify a contract between the Southbridge School Committee and Ms. Patricia Gardner as superintendent of schools for the period of July 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Quinney makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Congdon seconds the motion. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you. Agenda item 12C, this is a vote to ratify a contract between the Southbridge School Committee and Mr. Bassan Nemberko as consultant to the superintendent of schools for the period of July 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Quinney makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Congdon. Is there any discussion on this agenda item? Seeing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Five yes. Thank you, motion carries. And now we will entertain them. Oh, I just would like to say that um, we will issue a press release relative to these uh, uh, contracts um, in the next day or so. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor by show of hands, please. Thank you, and have a good evening. <laughs>